Becky Lowe's on here, and I want to welcome you to my engraving studio, which is just in a tiny nook that I managed to carve out of my small Toronto apartment here. I want to take the opportunity to talk to you a bit about my inspirations and give you a little bit of the behind the scenes look of my process. So for those of you who aren't familiar with me, I am a glass blower slash engraver. Um, and I say glass blower slash engraver because it means I blow my own glass as well as freehand engrave it all afterwards, which is sometimes a process uh, you don't see. A lot of times you have one or the other. I would usually take you through the hot shop process of glass blowing, which is where um, glass artists like myself working with various tools kind of like this guy here and this guy um, shape and work with hot molten glass but seeing as the world's a little crazy out there um, and I don't have access to a hot shop at the moment I thought I would show you the engraving part um, now usually engraving is done on a large lathe with a stone wheel uh, but I like to use instead as it's commonly known a dremel and um, this guy here is called my Fordham and he is a large industrial rotary tool and it allows me to maintain and replace parts so I'm not constantly having to buy a new unit. He's extremely loud and sounds far too close to a dentist drill. So I thought instead I would use uh, this little guy here, which is just a little lighter handheld tool that I have and it allows me to take my engraving out of the studio. Sometimes I like to do blind contour drawings on glass and this allows me to take my art out into the world. I wanted to show you a little bit about how I work on the glass. Um, a lot of my work you'll see as um, an urban landscape to it. And I just start each piece by doing what I call mapping out, which is where I'm physically drawing just the buildings. Now usually when I'm doing this, because I know my mom is watching, uh, I will wear a mask and an apron because I don't want to really inhale any of those little glass particles that you're seeing. And I will just keep doing that throughout the whole piece. And I tend to not put markings or decide where I'm going until I am there. I like to let the glass kind of decide where the horizon line should end. And I don't always do um, engravings with urban landscapes. I'll do other urban landmarks or images from nature. But the, the city landscape is one that definitely keeps reappearing in my work. Originally, I'm from Cochrane, Ontario, which is much smaller area um, than Toronto. And summer vacations for us was coming to Toronto. And I remember growing up and seeing that skyline each year getting closer and closer to us and the drive becoming shorter and shorter, it felt. And that always just that that magnitude and the mass of people was always something that I found fascinating and moving and living in the space itself is just enthralling and definitely gives me inspiration every day. So once I'm done my glass and I've gotten the cityscapes as I like them, I, I don't tend to like to end my glass here. I always like to add a little extra Easter egg to my glass. So sometimes I'll fill them with water or um, to and help enhance the optics of the glass. I will um, fill them with various objects, plants sometimes, as well as organic um, material. But for these ones here in particular, uh, I actually turned these into open-ended terrariums. Um, so this is actually a installation I'm working on for the Clay and Glass Gallery. It's gonna be called Green Living and it will hopefully be installed this summer. So I have a finished cone here. Um, and I've got a box of clay beads and I just kind of fill the bottom of my cone. So these beads just allow, um, as I don't have a bottom to these, these just allow that moisture doesn't get, gonna get trapped at the bottom of the glass here. I then grab my bowl of soil here and then again I just start filling it up. I choose personally to do cones 
Um, I find they work almost like a chimney, uh, especially once I get plants in there. Uh, you can see the condensation and farming on the side. Not the neatest, but what is making if you don't get a little dirty, right? And now this is the tricky part because I never want to shake it too much because I don't want the dirt to go too at the bottom. I want there to be a nice layer of beads. And I'm watching also my horizon line as well here. And then I have a couple seeds that I'm going to plant on the inside. Now this series of work that I started uh, was really inspired by a line of thought that I've had since a child. I mentioned growing up in um, a smaller town and watching the city kind of grow and change each year. And I always wondered and questioned what would happen if we let the plants grow with the city? Because I find cities, we kind of built our cities without thinking about nature. And I always wondered what would happen if we had let our nature grow with our cities. So that's where kind of this body of work came from. And so right now I'm just sprinkling in a few snapdragon seeds. I've been putting in lots of pollinator friendly plants as these guys are going to be going outside and we want to attract all the bees and butterflies and all the great, great pollinators that we have. So you get a nice little layer of seeds going. I like to pick up any of the seeds that I obviously dropped on the ground. Get my bowl. Uh, just a little sprinkling of soil on the top. And then I have a handy dandy spray bottle. And soaks it all in. And then, wait a little bit, I'll get something like this guy, which has a, a mix of ryegrass on the inside, or you have something like these guys here. It's a little hard to see, they're still just growing. Um, you can see we got a little bit of some nasturtium peeping up the top of this one here. Hopefully some more of its friends will join it and it will keep growing. Um, and this one has a bunch of mystery sprouts that we are still very excited to see. Stay safe and healthy, everybody, and have a great day.